Hey guys, how's it going? It's Leon here. In this video, I'm going to talk about expert thinking in INFPs. Originally, at the beginning of this video, I thought I was going to be able to cover expert thinking and introvert sensing, but I felt I actually discovered I have a lot of things to say about expert thinking. And I want to let you know that I've written an article called What Makes Rewiring Depression, Anxiety, and Other Emotional States Possible? Um, and be sure to check that out. I have a link to that article down below in the description. And I also want to let you know that I have a channel on psychotherapy. Recently, I have a couple of videos on reducing overwhelm and stopping in action. I have one of them here. I'm going to upload the second one later on. And this one is a step-by-step -step guide of how you could actually decrease the amount of anxiety that you have and make tangible steps in order to be able to reduce overwhelm and stop in action. So I have a link to that video um, up above and also down below in the description. Hello, hello, how's it going? It's Leon here. I'm resuming my series on all eight cognitive functions of the INFP, which is my type. Last time we talked about, or I talked about, I don't know why I said we talked about, um, I talked about introvert feeling, expert intuition, and I was using this website, World Socionic Society, um, to talk about it. And now we're going to use this website. I'm going <laughs> to, I keep saying we, it's obviously I am doing this. I'm going to use this website to talk about expert thinking and also introvert sensing as well. So basically, I'm reading the description and seeing how I relate to it. Um, and also some, some of my own thoughts about how we use this function. So expert thinking is uh, called pragmatism in socionics. INPs naturally associate human decency with the will to do practical good in the world, but are largely lacking in practical skills. Yeah, so I could, I could definitely, definitely reading that in itself makes me feel very vulnerable. I think we could be very self-conscious about this aspect, about our lack of practicality. We feel like everyone's eyes are on this uh, and they could tell. I think people can tell. <laughs> people can certainly tell that uh, we lack practical skills, but we're not, they, not, they may not be as harsh about it as we are harsh towards ourselves about the lack of practical skills. Often they have little awareness of how efficiently they are performing a particular task and can easily waste their time and energy. Yeah. Kind of like lose track of what I'm doing or like when I am working on something, I don't know how to do it in a way that does not, um, like, I don't know how to use my time that wisely necessarily. So I would like to, but then um, I just have a hard time estimating or figuring out how to just do things in a, in a kind of like a quicker matter, efficient matter, prioritize what is practical or, or pragmatic. Um, and I think we certainly would like to get better at that, but it's certainly a, a, a place of vulnerability. Um, it doesn't necessarily, this doesn't necessarily mean that we're not hard workers. It could go both ways. We get um, very lazy and not take care of practical aspects of things, but also we could, um, we're also very sensitive to quality of our work. And so we might excruciating, spend a lot of time working on things in, a, in the least efficient way possible. Um, that also comes with a bit of introvert sensing because we might get so absorbed into the details of what we're doing and very focused on that and kind of losing track of the bigger picture of how to efficiently um, do a task. So consequently, INFPs often worry about failure and incompetence, internally punishing themselves for not being good enough. I'm not very happy <laughs> reading about this. I think this... Um, this, uh, this, this is certainly something I do experience. To aid in this difficulty, INPs can be diligent learners trying to read up on helpful information that can enable them 
to do a better job. I am really fascinated with learning. I'm always trying to absorb information. Um, they desire to be helpful around others, less clumsy and more capable of handling daily matters well. Despite this, they can lack the ability to estimate the helpfulness or relevance of information they read and the methods they carry out and tend to indiscriminately accept the information they come across unless they get a feeling the person or source is dishonest. So reading this part, I don't necessarily agree that uh, I don't feel like I indiscriminately accept information. When I read things, I tend to um, I tend to be open-minded, but I also have, I believe I have a healthy dose of skepticism. And um, meeting INFPs, I don't think this is necessarily an, an issue, I think anyway. Uh, for this reason, they could greatly appreciate finding a trustworthy, reliable friend with the pragmatic expertise to help them um, in these areas and will respond very positively to someone taking time to patiently explain how something works for them. Uh, in such situations, they feel great wonder at the steady stream of practical information and its improvement of their daily lives. Uh, we will treat such knowledgeable people as the go-to expert and will readily rely on their assistance in handling our practical challenges of the day to day. Okay, so just kind of going over this whole entire description, I'll get to the part about this person who, um, you know, people who are very reliable in a pra practical sense. I'll, I'll get to that part. Okay, so let's talk about this description and also some of my own thoughts and insights. And these thoughts and insights are my own personal experience my own opinions. So if you don't resonate with them, just keep in mind, I might just be projecting because um, that's the thing about talking about my, about my own type. And one of my greatest fears when it comes to my channel is that some of these problems that I might have are just things that I'm just projecting <laughs> and might not actually apply to other INFPs. But um, I think just reading the beginning of this, we're kind of a type... Um, maybe especially early in our lives that we're very much wanderers. We don't really necessarily find our, our vocation until later in life compared to other types, um, especially vocation in a sense, in a very TE kind of sense of maybe we, we could find things that we're passionate about, but kind of like um, in terms of our career uh, path and kind of, finding something to commit to in that sense, um, that that might be an issue. So we're wandering around. We don't have, we kind of uh, have a zero, zero plan or um, we're just going about life in many ways a pass, uh, in a passive manner. It doesn't mean that, um, the thing is that we have introverted feelings. So there's things that do drive our passions, but there's a lot of things like in terms of handling of the external world in which we could kind of be uh, kind of passive about. Certainly we're, we're, uh, we could be outwardly flexible though. That's the, the flip side of the coin. Um, so I'm at peace because we're lacking um, expert thinking. Um, I think a lot of I'm at peace, they kind of want a bit of a guidebook to life, like something that would just tell them, like a book that's about how to's um, concerning life um, that would, um, but um, it could, that, that could just be me. Right. But I feel like when I talk to other entities, I kind of get that sense. Um, so there's a second part of this description, which talks about basically the INFP's dual. So someone who has extra thinking as a dominant function, um, I do have my own opinions about duality when it comes to personality type. First of all, I want to say that um, any one person could be compatible with any other person of any personality type. And that could include duals. So that could be like INFP, ESTJ couple, right? I don't think that does not, I don't believe that applies to everyone and maybe not in most cases. 
So in So Siang's, it's kind of emphasized that um, the duels, the opposites, are meant for one another. But I don't think that's necessarily the case. It's not the case for me. Um, the thing about duality is that so what So Siang's often focuses on is people's how people are very drawn to the inferior function, but I think most people have a love hate relationship with their inferior function. So I think especially in the beginning, there tends to be a lot of resistance like to the inferior function, ideas concerning practicality and pragmatism, INFPs actually resist against it. They don't think it's important. They think they kind of devalue this aspect of life and later on they find out um, how much um, they struggle because uh, they kind of ignore this aspect. So they kind of um, they kind of could block out this aspect of life almost like a blind spot. So we talk about the blind spot function. I talk about the blind spot function before being expert sensing, but I feel like the inferior function could be a blind spot because there's a sense of kind of just like blotting it out. I think uh, initially there is a resistance to this function, the inferior function, but then there's a draw to it. And then that draw could become like an obsession with the inferior function. So I'll let you know what I mean by that. But I want to let you know where this idea of duality comes from, because I believe people do show characteristics of being drawn to aspects of the dual of aspects of the inferior function. Because when I talk with personality, people with different personality types, they often make a request um, through the inferior function. I'll let you know what that means. People often ask questions about their inferior function. So with INFPs, I notice INFPs kind of need like extra instructions when it comes to things. Like they can't really trust themselves to come up with, the, with those instructions. And so uh, what we do is that we kind of like ask questions about like, how do you do this? How do you do that? We kind of ask additional questions to ensure this because we, we kind of lack self-confidence in this area of, of the how to's in life that I think that's very much associated with expert thinking. And I believe that we could learn to trust ourselves more too. If I, and I've tried this before. Like, if I could really sit with it instead of asking a expert thinking kind of questions, if I could really sit with it, um, I could figure out for myself what to do, what to do next, what kind of procedure can I come up with. I could do that more on my own, and it doesn't necessarily take a lot of energy, right? Expert thinking is actually a very efficient function. Uh, Darren already looked into the brains of expert th thinkers and shows that. They don't, um, they don't take a lot of lighting up in the brain because the whole idea is efficiency. So expert thinking, expert intuition lights up a lot of the brain. It's not a very efficient function, but expert thinking is like very quick. And I think that we could actually, you can teach yourself to kind of um, develop expert thinking in the sense like it's not as hard as we think, like to come up with the steps the how-tos, the to-dos, um, I think we kind of overthink the whole entire process and that's what makes it uh, difficult. So again, I, I, I think, yeah, INFPs can be kind of lazy, but we're also not lazy too. Um, again, it has to do with like, we could be like very idealistic and very um, obsessed with the quality of our work. So kind of like we go into an FISI kind of mode. FISI could be kind of lazy in a sense, um, but it's also on flip side, very obsessively um, diligent. And that actually has to do with the lack of expert thinking. So, and the reason why I come to this conclusion is that when I meet expert thinking doms, they're, they are hardworking in a sense, but they're lazy in a sense because um, they're lazy in the sense that they just want to kind of get things done and over with. And so long as they kind of like check off the items, then it's like, there, I'm done, right? Uh, and in a sense, they do, meet the, they, they do meet the external quality of the work, but not like the internal quality that we were looking for. We were like very obsessed with that internal quality. Um, so 
introvert feeling, we kind of come up with standards. Uh, we, we kind of hold ourselves to a pretty high standard, but the standard is to very intangible qualities. Whereas expert thinking has very um, tangible um, qualities that they're looking for. So those are things that get easily check off on a list. But for us, it's not. But we really hold ourselves to these internal standards. And in that sense, it's almost like us being a reverse ESTJ piece, how ESTJs look like on the outside, they're holding their reins very, very tightly. We're doing so actually within. So if you look at ESTJ and you really hope that they could just kind of relax a bit, uh, we actually need to do the same for ourselves. So, but it's kind of like from the inside out more. And I believe that when we could relax a bit, we could actually start to achieve more in, in life. So one thing I want to talk about here is when we kind of go into extrovert thinking overdrive. So again, we're kind of a reverse ECJ. And I think every personality type kind of gets obsessed with their inferior function in a way. Like, for example, INFPs could kind of be very focused on how everything around them seems to be working, not working, um, not very efficient. Um, and we could kind of pay attention to these aspects in which the world could just um, pick it up in terms of the standards of efficiency and and all these kind of like extra thinking kind of matters. And I think this is a part of ourselves that is projected because we could see the lack of it in ourselves. So this is something that we kind of hyper-focus on. I do believe that types tend to see their inferior function clearly in a sense, because when I look at other types when and they talk about their inferior function, I feel like there's some aspect where they could actually see it very, very well, but they just don't know how to act on it. Um, so I think we do see it well, the in a very um, narrow sense, like we don't know how to go about expert thinking at a day by day matter, like in terms of day to day practical affairs and setting goals and objectives and things of this nature. Um, and, and completing these kind of things, we tend to do not very well at, but we're kind of focused on it in a very meta sense, like when I talk with INFPs and also ISFPs, they tend to be very uh, goal-driven and focused on fulfilling those goals. And they have a sense of this in a very meta sense, maybe like a more long-term sense that, or a kind of overall sense, rather than in terms of the day-to-day -day sense of expert thinking. Um, and then when we get absorbed in the meta view, I, and this is what I see with every single type, I think Every type tends to be a bit too focused on inferior function in a way. Like they may see some aspect of it clearly, but then they're narrowly focused on it at the exclusion of other factors when it comes to life. And that's important to keep in mind because uh, when I observe other types, you know, you, I think when we observe other types, we could see how they kind of overemphasize the, inf the inferior function. And we know that there's other aspects of life that to pay attention to as well. So I think when we get obsessed with um, expert thinking and just to keep in mind, uh, other types are not going to be so focused on that. So we don't need to be so hard on ourselves about expert thinking or hard on other people when it comes to expert thinking as well. So when it becomes really meta, expert thinking could be very, um, so Carl Jung calls this petty tyranny. Like we're sounding like very fussy about standards or with boundaries and things of that nature and uh, people crossing that or not fulfilling um, certain obligations. And uh, we, we really don't like that. And I think um, INFPs could also, when they get absorbed into expert thinking, they could actually be ruthlessly pragmatic in a way, in a, in a really strange kind of way. So... Um, it's kind of funny because I only found this out when I started to uh, talk with a couple uh, and, and more than one couple, by the way, in which the um, one, one of the partners is expert thinking and the other one is introverted feeling. And I noticed 
a really strange kind of thing. The introvert feeler is very more emotional and less pragmatic on the um, uh, day-to-day level, and expert think- thinker is more pragmatic and less um, uh, based on emotions on a day-to-day level. But at a more meta level, it's switched the other way around, where I, I find that introvert feeler actually goes around life in a meta way in a very uh, practical kind of like they tend to be very practical in terms of dealing with others and what to kind of expect from others. And then maybe a bit too much so. And we might, um, uh, as introvert feelers, be too focused on expert thinking and how to just go through life and do what is the pragmatic thing to do at the expense of our ideals. And when I looked at the expert thinking type in the couple, the expert thinking type was pragmatic, and but at um, at a more meta level, actually a lot more vulnerable and kind of a bit uh, absorbed in emotions. I noticed that personality types also, like when they start to get absorbed in their inferior function, they kind of forget who they are. They kind of forget about their primary function. INFPs forget about their ideals. And I've seen this over and over again, um, where INFPs and ISFPs could kind of get fixated on um, their limitations. So you know how people like, um, they, they might say like, I, I'm too old to do this. Um, and they might, I think anybody of any type could say that, but I think INFPs and ISFPs could be very focused they may be very focused on this to a fault. They, they're very focused on how they are limited. So in terms of something that I find to be helpful for INFPs to know is that, first of all, I, I talk with introvert feeling types and I notice the tendency to kind of get obsessed with extra thinking in, in the sense that we kind of get worried about our own practical limitations a lot, even more so than other types. So things like, oh, I'm too old for this, or my finances are no good for this, et cetera, which other types tend to be more um, sensitive to on a more day-to-day kind of level, whereas those are things that we kind of ignore. Um, I find that when I talk with INFPs and also ISFPs as well, that we kind of get obsessed with how limited we are by uh, practical means and more so than other types. And to the extent that I find that other types can actually be more idealistic in a way than, than we are. Like we kind of get fixated by the numbers and how the numbers limit us and we won't be able to achieve our ideals as a result. So I don't want you to get uh, caught up with that. And to remember your ideals, remember your introvert feeling. Um, so what I recommend is to kind of make the, um, the inferior function better at, at a day-to-day level, like in terms of handling day-to-day practical affairs. Just work on it. Just be able to improve 1% every single day. And then that's, that 1% quote is from the book Atomic Habits. Just get 1% better every day and eventually you'll be on your way. You don't have to worry about expert thinking in a meta kind of sense. And I think we could actually reduce expert thinking in when we kind of get into, get absorbed in expert thinking in that meta sense and not kind of be so obsessed with it in, in that kind of way. And just, just work with it a little bit of time at a, at a day-to-day level.